Hi friends, welcome back to The Hangout. Now before we dive into this episode, I want to make sure that you are caught up with the latest season of High School Musical, the musical, the series, because there will be spoilers in this episode. Now if you haven't caught up, go watch it and then come back and hang out. Also, this video is not sponsored, but I wanted to give a special shout out to Disney Plus for helping out and making these episodes possible. Now, let's get into it. Today, we've got a legend, and I don't use that word lightly. He can tap, he can sing, he can act. That's a triple threat, okay? Um, we've got uh, Big Red. He plays Big Red on Disney Plus's High School Musical, the musical, the series. And uh, let's welcome Larry Saperstein to the show. How are you? Hi, I'm so good. Thank you so much for having me. Before we dive in, I, let's do the classic High School Musical warm-up drill. Give me your best. Oh, oh yeah. Ma. <laughs> Amazing. So far, we have four episodes, five episodes out now. Um, there's a lot going on. And before we dive into all of that, I want to talk about, I guess, your musical theater background in tap. When did you kind of first fall in love with the art and how did that all kind of happen? You know, I've kind of been dancing for as long as I can remember. Uh, I took my very first dance class when I was like six years old and uh, it was like a tap jazz class uh, that I just kind of was in. And um, and I kind of started doing theater and performance around the same time in community theater. And uh, I, I, I got much more serious about tap dance when I was like, uh, 12 years old, 11, 12, um, I started dancing in New York City at a, a place called the American Tap Dance Foundation. Um, and that dance studio only did tap dance. And so uh, I learned about so many wonderful tap dancers uh, kind of in tap dance history, Gregory Hines, you know, uh, Bill Robinson, all these kind of amazing people that have contributed to the world of, of tap dance. And that's kind of uh, the through line that's kind of helps me uh, it's always reminded me about my love for performance. And uh, I always feel like tap dance is the thing that kind of helps me uh, center myself and remind me, mm -hmm. you know, that this is what I love to do. And, uh, and so I can't imagine a, a world without me tap dancing. <laughs> oh, I love that. Has it been like that ground for you, especially during this past year, which has been difficult for many people? Yeah, I mean, honestly, it, it was a tricky time for a little while because uh, I wasn't able to go and dance, you know, with friends in, in a dance studio with a lot of space. For a little while, I was dancing kind of on a little board uh, in my basement. Um, but, you know, I, I kind of for, for a little while had to find some other creative outlets. I was learning how to play the piano, doing some other stuff like that. Um, but as the year kind of has gone on, I've realized uh, that I that I need to focus more on tap dancing because that is is the main thing for me um, and so so I've been getting back into it slowly not that I ever fully lost it but uh, mm -hmm. I've been kind of I've refound my my love for it I've been kind of reminded that that's the thing that I need to be doing I love that and you grew up around music around Broadway what were some of your favorite musicals growing up Ooh, well, the first, so th this might play into the whole tap dance thing. The first show that I ever saw on Broadway was actually 42nd Street. Uh, and oh. I'll never forget, like, the the iconic sort of opening number of 42nd Street is the audition. Uh, and it's a big tap dance number. And the curtain rises just a little bit so that you see the, just the feet of the entire orchestra uh, the entire ensemble rather mm -hmm. uh, you know just for about like two counts of it you just see their feet and then it kind of opens up and you see everybody and I'll never forget that that was like okay. the, sort of my first uh, Broadway big Broadway experience maybe I was like six or seven years old uh, so that was that that'll always be a favorite for me 42nd Street and then you know growing up I, I loved uh, I loved Disney musicals like The Lion King, The Little Mermaid. Um, you know, I've seen I've seen so many shows, and I, there's so many that have uh, so many amazing things that I love about them. That's amazing. So, with the Hangout, we always want to talk about how music sort of impacts people in different ways. For you, being on a musical show as well and having music be such a big thing for you growing up, what does it sort of mean to you, or how does it sort of change your life? Yeah, I, I mean, I've always been around music as well. When I was uh, in high school, I, I played in the jazz band uh, and sort of jazz music has been a big foundation in my life, uh, be also because of tap dance and, and musical theater as well as sort of 
uh, oftentimes very heavily rooted in kind of old jazz music. Um, so I, I think I think music for me is is just that it's it's a thing that I can dance to. It's a thing that I sort of understand and that that always brings me back uh, to to the thing that I love. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So with the new episodes out, guys, spoilers ahead. If you have not seen the episodes, go watch them before you listen to this episode because yeah, we're coming at you left and right. Um, Big Red this season. Oh my goodness. We, it, it, I, I want to say he might just be my favorite character. Whoa, like, thank you so like, much. It's just so good. I want to talk about the Bell audition sequence. Mm-hmm. What was it like for you guys as a cast to shoot that sequence together and just have fun with it? Well, shout out to our amazing director of that episode, Kimberly McCullough, uh, who has directed so many wonderful episodes uh, for our show. She had a total plan of how we were going to film that Bell audition uh, number. Uh, And she sort of had us, she would set the camera up and then we would kind of all be waiting, ready to go with our little sections because there were so many little sections. And we would kind Mm -hmm. of step in, sing the section and then kind of step off and, and they would kind of be filtered in and uh, that day, that filming that bell sequence actually went by very quickly because of how oh. well she planned it, uh, which was which was so very cool. Um, and then just to kind of see it come together uh, and have it be so amazing uh, was was really cool. I think it's such a great uh, way into the season um, because obviously in season one we have an entire audition episode, uh, which is. Mm-hmm. our first our first episode our pilot episode um but in season two we've kind of we're kind of saying you know we've already done that and so we can kind of mm-hmm. instead of doing an entire audition you know episode we can maybe condense it a little bit into this like really awesome number um and it kind of shows we're we're here to do a, a bigger and better thing um and so I love the way that that came out and I think that whole audition sequence in the you know that second half of of the second episode is really great I love that we get to see like another world. We get to see Big Red's like pizzeria and family and everything. What was it like kind of diving back into that and also just getting to explore your character more this time around? Yeah, I mean, when I was told that Big Red was going to have a pizza place, I was so excited because I think it just gives so much more insight into who Big Red is and it allows us to see Big Red's family. Um, I love the dynamic of Courtney working at the pizza place and, uh, you know, sort of being being involved with Big Red in that way and uh, gives me and her, I uh, mean, Dara and Courtney, uh, more of an opportunity to kind of play off each other. And we've had some amazing, you know, pizza shop moments. I think just in general, the set is of the pizza place is yes. so beautiful. Um, and so it, we always had so much fun filming there because uh, I remember talking with the producers of it kind of being for the story, this like, uh, this hangout location that wasn't East High. They want they wanted something, you know, that wasn't East High. Kind of like a Central Perk kind of friends yeah, yeah, sort exactly. of coffee shop. So yeah. It's so cool to kind of be the, you know, the owner of that space and to kind of know, well, anytime there's a pizza place thing, like Big Red will be around in some way because it's Big Red's uh, pizza place. Um, I love that. And, and I think it works so perfectly for, for, Big Red and what his family is and kind of the quirkiness of, of that whole uh, Radonovich uh, clan. <laughs> I love it that like all you guys are getting like the equal amount of spotlight this time around. We get to dive into each character. I want to talk about Big Red and Ashlyn. Oh my goodness. Everyone's hearts are exploding. Um, can you talk about, I guess, the relationship with you and Julia because you guys are best friends outside of the show too. What's it like? Does it make it easier for you guys on set to play these characters too? Yeah, I mean, you know, what's what's been so exciting about the the Big Red Mashlin relationship and watching it grow was me and Julia found out that Big Red and Ashlyn were going to have a relationship, honestly, like maybe the second day that we knew each other. Uh, so we've been waiting for the moments and the, the sweet kind moments for over two years you know and like oh my when, god when they started you know when when we knew that they were going to come in towards the end of season one we were mm-hmm. really excited but you know getting to really fully explore that in season two has been so amazing and there's no one else that I'd rather do it with uh but Julia Lester uh because she's just such a gracious scene partner and she's so wonderful to to be on set with and uh and so I I think we we have this like unspoken a uh, way of communicating with each other about uh, all of those scenes, and uh, and I think we always we always wind up with something that we're really proud of. 
Um, and then, you know, just in terms of what is written uh, this season and, and the storylines, it's been so cool to watch Big Red and Ashlyn kind of grow together. I think they really pull out the best in each other and they really see the best in each other. And that is something, a message that I think is really beautiful uh, in the season it is kind of all of these characters really believe in each other and they believe in what they have and they and they see that they have something special. And, and I think that is something that, you know, a, a teen audience will really love and resonate with uh, in season two. Totally. And I love, I, I want to talk about um, your guys' little, um, little mint gesture in the new year's eve episode and you guys are like looking at each other is it is it gonna happen is this happening now let's just do it do you guys have any like inside jokes when you guys are shooting scenes together well you know i think there's always funny little things that that happen uh, especially with that mid scene that that scene was actually filmed before uh the pandemic so there right. were you know we, we were kind of able to to do some things that maybe we wouldn't have been able to do it, when we were filming during the pandemic, like totally. for example, the we had those mints, but uh, they wouldn't fully be like dissolved by the time <laughs> that we went to go and shoot it again, you know, because a lot of times yeah. you'll shoot and take multiple times. So sure. the props guy actually came around and it, he just would hold out his hands after the after we popped our mints into our mouths and they would yell cut and we would just like both spit them <laughs> into his hands and then he like ran away and then he would like bring us new mints it was so funny and we were like hey, his name is Matt and we were like Matt you don't have to you know we you don't have to hold out your hands we can put them somewhere else and he was like no this is the fastest way and it was just like so funny that we were all just feeling so comfortable and we knew that the moment was going to be so sweet and uh we wanted to get it right Oh man, that that is a job. That that's fun. <laughs> um, I want to talk about, I guess, upcoming characters too. It was announced that Andrew Bartholdman was going to be on um, this season too, and he's one of your best friends. What was it like, kind of inviting him into this family? Yeah, I, you know, I I knew for actually a really long time that Andrew was going to be part of the show. Uh, I because I actually had found out just before lockdown that Andrew is going to be in the show, and he wasn't announced until this past February or, or March. Oh my God. Um, and so I kind of knew for almost a year. And that <laughs> was actually a large reason why our friendship grew so much was because of the anticipation of him being able to come to Salt Lake and be part of our East High family. Um, and it was so wonderful because a, a lot of the cast is, is from the West Coast. Um, mm -hmm. And I am one of the only kids that's from the East Coast from New York. Uh, so having like another New Yorker there with me was so cool because mm -hmm. we could kind of relate, uh, you know, about some New York things and talk about Broadway and uh, and all that stuff. You guys are sitting on secrets and secrets for like years on end. <laughs> how, how excited is it now that I guess half of it, some of it's out? but you guys still have like the rest of the season to go. What, what are you most excited for people to see in the rest of the season, I guess? I mean, you know, the second half of the season has so many more surprises, right? We're leading up to the show. Oh uh, you know, we're, we're leading up to this competition and, and there's going to be so many cool things that that uh, that go back and forth. I, I can't wait for everybody to see uh, how much funnier uh, Andrew's character and uh, Olivia Keegan, who is so funny as Lily, uh, you know, they, they are so amazing and they really shine uh, towards the end of the season. And so Ooh. I can't wait for everybody to see that. I think there's, you know, every single episode is packed with, uh, with some amazing, amazing moments. And so mm -hmm. we've only seen half of it at this point. Yeah. Do we get any High School Musical cameos this time around? Do we see any like special guest stars that we maybe haven't been <laughs> announced yet? I don't know. Well, I can't say much, but you know, there are so many more characters already in, in the High School mm -hmm. Musical, the musical, the series world. Uh, and it's been so amazing to see um, that these incredible, talented, iconic, legendary, actors and performers want to be part of our show and uh it's yeah. it's been so nice to have them in our family and so there might be a few surprises down the line but you'll just have to wait and see i want to talk about i guess the diversity and all of you guys in the show there's just no matter who's watching the show you can see a bit of yourself in one or two or three maybe more characters mm -hmm. what does it kind of mean to you to be a part of a cast that's so inclusive i mean i think that really that's the only way to do yeah. to do a show like this is I think this is you know the authentic uh high school hallway like that this is what a cast 
uh, for a show like this should be. Um, mm -hmm. And so it, I, I think that's why the show is what it is and has become what it's become uh, is because everybody sees themselves in in one or a few of, of the characters and it appeals to such a wide audience um, because of that. And I think what's so special is that every single character uh, is made to be authentically themselves. I, I mean, I know mm. for myself, I love getting to portray um, a boy who is rewarded for being sweet and sensitive and uh, and kind and who you know isn't made to do sports and who uh, who kind of falls into theater and is kind of feeling a little bit lost but finds his way uh, in in sort of a a new a new community and is always like celebrated for that. Um, I think mm -hmm. it, it shows you know young young boys and young men like how to uh, how to act in a relationship and how to treat yeah. the people that they care about. Um, and so I think that that's really special. And you know, and I am just one of eleven you know amazing uh, series regulars that get to tell their own story. So uh, every single every single character has a story that is that is similar, that is authentically them and that they get to share and that will resonate with someone. That's amazing. Um, what do you think you've kind of taken away or learned from Big Red this season? Or what have you used from maybe your experiences to bring to Big Red? Yeah, I, I mean, it's been so incredible to kind of relive some of my high school uh, experiences through Big Red and kind of watch him uh, struggle in similar ways that I think we all do about uh, you know, his future and his passions and, go, uh, you know, stepping outside of his comfort zone. Um, and so, all of that stuff was was such a, a treat to be able to explore. Um, and so, I mean, I personally will always love that no matter what Big Red is doing, he's always coming at it from a place of love and from, mm. uh, you know, his sensitivity and his loyalty. Uh, and I think that is a core characteristic of who he is. Uh, and uh, and it's been so wonderful to, to kind of take that from him and uh, and put that into my life, as well as bring so many things about myself into into Big Red. We've over the past two years, I think, you know, Big Red and Larry have kind of joined and and become one in, in a way. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's a lot of with your cast members. Like a lot of you guys are pretty similar to your guys' actual characters. Um, I guess aside from COVID, what do you think were some of the biggest challenges filming this season? Yeah, I mean this season was just so much larger than anything we had ever done mm -hmm. before. We had, yeah. you know, many more dance rehearsals for all of the huge numbers uh, in the show. Like, you know, the, the number with me and Julia was uh, such a big moment for us. And, uh, and it was so exciting getting to uh, like, every, everybody has their own thing. And so, you know, we, we just put a lot more effort and not that we haven't put everything into the show but but walking in and knowing that it was going to be you know twice as big and, and twice as uh iconic really uh I, I was was kind of a huge responsibility um and so it was but I, I mean I, it wasn't really a challenge necessarily it was just more of a, of a of a gift and something that we were all like very excited to to explore and kind of finish what we started Iconic is the exact word. This season <laughs> is already iconic. Um, do you do you think like the cliffhanger for season two is more intense, maybe less intense? I don't know than season one. Like, what can we expect there? Ooh, well, you know, I think um, I, I think you'll have to wait and see. Honestly, I mean, because there's so much that happens before we get to the final cliffhanger. Um, oh man, there are so many more surprises that we have. So. Uh, it's it's gonna be really cool, but I I think you know fans will not be disappointed. I'm I'm so happy to hear that. Um, I want to talk. About, we kind of have like a little game that we like doing. It's kind of like a scenario question sort of game. It's kind of like a rapid fire. If you want to answer them really fast, but okay. let's quickly get into it. We're gonna kind of tie in some of the episodes as well. But okay. okay, you're the director of Coachella. What are three? Who are the three artists headlining the show? Okay, well Olivia Rodriguez. Olivia Rodrigo has to come, obviously. Uh, I want to see her at Coachella. Um, I am a huge fan of uh, Anderson Pock, um, and mm -hmm. I'm so excited that he's sort of getting this really cool uh, moment right now with Bruno Mars. So I think oh my God. maybe some Silk Sonic, song. right? Um, <laughs> and then I love I love Wolfpack. Uh, 
I think they do some really great work too. So maybe the three of them. That's an amazing lineup. So <laughs> you're, you're in a coma after attending this crazy festival. Um, what's the one song that'll wake you up? Hmm. Maybe, you know, going on the Olivia Rodrigo trend, maybe some deja vu. Ooh, so good. So good. Um, after being out for so long, it's Valentine's Day. We see Valentine's Day in episode three. What's a romantic gesture you're going to do for your loved one? Ooh, um, well, something that I've already done in my life, I actually, I mean, and, you know, I, I wasn't dating this person. This was actually my, my best friend in mm -hmm. high school. Uh, we were uh, in Italy on a school trip. And uh, I decided that I wanted her to come to prom with me. So I sang uh, a song, we were in Italy and I asked her to prom uh, with me in Italy. And so, so that was maybe a fun romantic gesture, even though it wasn't a, like a, a romantic partner, but, um, but a romantic love gesture. Love is love, love is love. <laughs> <laughs> COVID is over, Broadway is now open again. What's the one show you are watching? Ooh, well, there's going to be, I hope, so many more amazing shows that open up on Broadway in the next uh, few years as Broadway starts to reopen and as things start to come back. Um, I think I need to go see Wicked again uh, because mm -hmm. it's been a while since I've seen mm -hmm. some Wicked on Broadway. <laughs> Ashlyn talks about it in episode two. You're going back to Disneyland. Who are you Disney bounding as? Ooh, um, maybe I can do some Peter Pan. I wear what? like a green, like a green shirt. I think, I think yep. I can do a Peter Pan day. Nice. Um, it's wrapped. You guys are wrapped on a Friday night. Who's planning? Who's hanging out? Where, what's the cast doing? A lot of times we, uh, we will have like a pizza and game night. Uh, we'll, mm -hmm. we'll sort of order some dominoes or something like that. And we'll play uh, like Uno or some, we, we, we did start branching out and finding new games during season two. We would play a lot of Jackbox games where we could do that. Oh, nice. uh, we played some Among Us when that was really popular. <laughs> so we, we, do our, we do our game nights for sure. That's classic. Um, yeah, I wanna talk, what, give me the backstory. What's Spicy Uno? What, what is that game that you guys are playing as a okay. cast? Okay, so Spicy Uno is uh, a version of Uno. We did not come up with it. it apparently okay. a lot of people know how to play it. Like it's not just a, a high school musical cast exclusive. Uh, okay, okay, Uno. okay. But, but Josh was the one who taught it to us when we started season one. Um, and it is a version of Uno with a few additional rules. Uh, that make the game just more interesting. Uh, mm -hmm. You can sort of, there's like a slap down rule where you have to slap on the pile if a certain number is played. And if you, the last person to slap has to take two cards, uh, you can add more cards to the, uh, you know, the plus two and the plus four pile. You can reverse it onto the person next to you. And you can also help the people around you, but blindly. So if someone can't go, they have to trust the person that's willing to help them. Uh, and sometimes the person is actually gonna help them and sometimes they're gonna give them a card that they can't use and then they just have an extra card that they have to keep. So it's a, Uno involves like some sabotage and some trust and it, it's a little it's a little more spicy. That's why it's called. Oh, we love the spice. And mm -hmm. you mentioned Among Us, who was like the best imposter in the group when you're playing? Ooh, you know, uh, Sophia Wiley was the one who said that we should play Among Us. And we used to, before Among Us was popular, we used to play Mafia, uh, mm. which is basically the same game, but kind of in person and not like on your phone. Um, mm -hmm. And I remember one time we played Mafia and Sophia the whole time was like, I've never played this before. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. And then she was Mafia, like she won because she convinced everybody that she had no idea what she was doing. So Sophia is the one that we got to watch out for. <laughs> yeah. Last season, season one, I think you guys were in the gym hallway. Um, you guys were, you guys literally had like a musical theater moment. You guys busted out and just started dancing. For season two, what was one of the most behind the scenes iconic moments for you guys? Well, season two was really special uh, because we were spending a lot of time with each other uh, both on set and off set, it, you know, in our personal lives. And uh, because of the pandemic, we were becoming even closer as a family and as a, as a group. And, uh, and mm -hmm. so we did some amazing uh, hangouts, like just our little social bubble. We did an awesome like Halloween party. We did a Thanksgiving of our own, you know, reminiscent of, of the Ashland Thanksgiving party. We did, we did so, sort of our own sort of tribute to that. Um, and so it was just so amazing to like spend 
real important like personal time uh, with the cast. That's amazing. Well, I think we'll wrap it up there, but thank you so much, Larry, for hanging out and being on the show and talking about this new season that everyone is just so hyped about. Um, yeah, thanks, thanks for, for hanging me. out. Thank you so much. Thanks for hanging out. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Leave us a comment and review on our YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you're tuning in from. Make sure to like and subscribe as well so you know when new episodes come out. I would also really appreciate it. You can follow us along on all of our socials at The Hangout CA. That's it for now. We'll see you next week.